Hey guys, it's Tinker from Electronic Creations. One of the things I've always liked about the Arduino and the Pi is that no matter what, I only needed 12 or 5 volts it seemed. That there was never really any need to go outside of that realm. So, a while back I made myself a 12 and a 5 volt steady power supply. And that's this guy up here. And quite literally, all it does is go 12 and 5 volts, depending on what I switch the, uh, the switch to. But lately, I've been finding more and more applications where I really wanted to have a little more control. Didn't want to spend $150, $160 on a variable power supply, so I decided to make one myself. And it's inexpensive. It's, well, okay, it's okay, not that great to look at. But, um, hey, it was a lot of fun. I've got some other ones and more about that in a bit. So here we go. All right. So when we flip this guy on, right now I've got it hooked up just to the 12-volt system. Uh, waiting on a power cord. So unfortunately you're only going to get to see the 12 volt demonstration. On the right hand side you see that I've got my voltage adjusted down to 9. That was for using on a um, one of my motors to see what would happen with the torque. On the left hand side though it is running at a full 12 volts and that won't change. So when I want to adjust it simply go in here and turn my knob. 11 and a half is about the highest you're going to get. You might get 11. There we go. 11.6 can't get more than you put in so the buck that I'm using keeps it at 11.6 keep it safe and then we go down of course you're working through your numbers and you notice at about five it starts to get dim four and a half it actually disappears unfortunately these little displays require five volts to keep active but that doesn't mean that nothing's happening we in fact if I take my uh, probe over here and hook it up. You'll see that we're getting 1.26 out of it. That's the lowest it will go. And if you'll put up with my hand for just a second, what I'm going to do is adjust it just a little bit because this is probably where we're going to end up with some of our low voltage in our Pi type things. And now we're at 3.4. So I was able to adjust it. And again, when I'm ready to go back up to now, let's go to 10 this time. Um, so now I want 10 volts coming out. Well, that's fine. 10 works for some motors, and uh, it's got its own difference. So great little uh, addition. It's already starting to pay for itself in terms of what I can do and its flexibility. Didn't think I'd ever use it, but boy, has it come in handy. And when I'm not using the variable, I just use the solid side. All right, let's look at the back and see what's going on inside. All right, so here's the back side. It's really pretty straightforward and simple. We've got ourselves just a standard power block coming in here. Here's my 12 volt. And again, I've got a dual voltage cable coming. And these are generally used for hard drives, disk drives that you've got in your computer for an external version. But it comes with a 5 and a 12, and I'll, I'll tie that into it. Over here is my buck on the right-hand side where the LED is blinding us. And these three wires that are added on here, you simply desolder the pot, the little, usually it's a blue box, which has got a screw on top. And you can desolder that, run it over here to your own pot. That way we're not worried about trying to turn a small screw back here while checking on what's going on with our display. We've got a nice pot in front with our display. It just makes life so much easier. Get yourself a little homemade power distribution up here. I can give you a better shot. Uh, this is where the power comes in from our switch, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then my distribution points. Two monitors and a six-pin three-position switch. It's called an on-off on. -off -on. Uh, my 12 volt in, my whatever out, and 5 volt in. Whichever position the switch is in, that's the voltage that's coming over to my distribution point. That's why I can see 5 or I can see 12. Uh, and it works straightforward. If I were to show you what it looked like on this one, there's the 12. Switch it off. And then I can switch it right over to the 5. All right. Back onto this guy. So, again, straightforward. Um, really easy to put together. Most of it's just extra parts that are laying around. 
the only one you might have to pick up is an extra buck if you don't keep one of those or those little displays uh, the good news is nothing really overly expensive so back on the front one more look things you'll need on the front your three position switch pot a couple of banana plugs and a couple of displays and if you're not interested in one or the other you don't even have to have multiple displays and multiple outputs it makes it really easy that's about it if you need more information or you want some more detail on how I put this together head on over to my instructables and I put a link down below it will take you right to my desktop power supply page and you can get a full view of what's going on with that if you don't want to build one but you want to buy one I do sell these in my Etsy shop this is one of the things that I do for a living I love this hobby it's turned out to be amazing so this uh, as well as my arcade I've got some waterers greenhouses cat feeders just things I think up and decide to make and start putting up there uh, I would really appreciate the support if you get a chance if not just give me some feedback love the comments love the feedback and it helps me keep improving what I've got so this is Tinker with Electronic Creations thank you for watching and look forward to building with you again soon.